What's up? Y'all know what time it is. It's time to kick it off. Another <clears throat> live stream. We had so much fun last night that I wanted to come back and have more fun with you. <clears throat> Welcome to Fun Town. I hope you brought your vaccine passport to Fun Town. Let me scan you. Beep, beep. You're in. To Fun Town. You arrived. You're here. I try to tell you so, but I guess you didn't know, as the saddest story goes, baby now I got the flow, cause I knew it from the start, Bitcoin when you broke my heart, that I had to come again, and show you that I'm real, you lied to me, those times I said I love you, you lied to me, yes I tried, Yes, I tried Even though you know I died for you Yes, I cry Yes, I cry <laughs> Come on Come on again Oh my gosh Here I am Oh, once again Top of the world Why are you coughing, bro? It's the allergies. Have you seen the allergy report <coughs> today? <coughs> stop coughing. Stop coughing. I will never super tell you again. Stop coughing. <coughs> Did you see the allergy report here? It's over 10. You think I want to cough? <coughs> you think I want to not sing <coughs> Return of the Mac correctly? No. All the nasty things you've done So baby listen carefully While I sing my comeback song You lied to me Cause she said she'd never turn on me But you did But you did That's my favorite part All this pain you said I'd never feel But I do But I do Creed Turn off a mark here it is. Hold on. Don't you know? Here I go. A little girl wants my pearl. Up and down. Round and round. Return of the Mac. You lied to me. Cause she said she'd never turn on me. But you did. But you did. All this pain you said I'd never feel. But I do. But I do, do, do. Come on. Oh my gosh! I did it wrong. Anyway, y'all having fun? What's up? Every time I sing, I get super chest and no super chest today. <coughs> Too much energy. <coughs> I was I was free basing chalk. People said, "Do you snort that chalk?" No, I was free basing it. I was putting chalk into a crack pipe, and I was inhaling it like DMT with Rogan. Yeah, I wanna huff that. DMT with road joking Cause I'm broken I don't know I thought maybe that'd be a Creed song I don't know That was a pretty good How you like Creed, Scott Stapp singing Return of the Mac <laughs> What do you think of that? Got some Manuka honey Helping me out Who? Why wouldn't we be happy today bro? 
Did you see Bitcoin today? <laughs> Did you see Bitcoin today? Yeah, we're going to be talking about, well, here we go, another one hour of Bitcoin. He's going to talk about Bitcoin for one hour. Here we go. We started. We're five minutes in. We've got 55 minutes left of Bitcoin rants. <laughs> we, we don't even have the crowd here tonight. I mean, we got our, we got our inner crowd. We got our inner secret society crowd, our little Jared Leto uh, sober cult crowd with us tonight. McCoins, McCoins. How was the Mac ever going to come back, they said. Well, with Bitcoin, that's how. And I told y'all, return of the Bitcoin Mac. It is return of the Bitcoin Mac. For whatever reason, this song allows me, they allow me to play this uh, 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 on the, on the stream. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> it's all just stream of consciousness over here. More like stream of unconsciousness. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome. We are going to be talking about some serious stuff tonight. <clears throat> We're going to get to the highlights. I've actually watched the entire Andrew Bustamante interview. There were some interesting little gems, clips, secrets dropped. We're going to analyze that. We're going to look at some of the old school black helicopter that's not racist issues because some of that's coming back. Remember black helicopters? That's not a race thing. That's a, a Wright Brothers air, air flight thing. <clears throat> We're going to talk about <clears throat> Candace versus Destiny. What? What? Weird. Weird thing. Okay. Whatever. But we'll, we'll do that. <clears throat> the allergies are over 11, if you didn't know, today. We're going to talk about Nicolas Cage for one hour. No, I'm joking. We're not talking about Nicolas Cage. We're going to talk about the economic problems. We're going to talk about this... <clears throat> Southern girl thing that broke the internet. Even Alex Jones talking about it. What, noodling. By the way, I'm from Tennessee. And I lived and growed it up next to the lake. Where everybody does catfish fishing. I grew up catfish fishing. People were making fun of me because they were like, You thought it was run a trout line. Yeah, I never run a trot line. I didn't even know what that was. Correct. No, I just had, I had a, a Snoopy... When I was like five, I had a Snoopy fishing rod. And then I got a full adult size fishing rod when I was a teenager. And I thought fishing was fun. People in Tennessee that like, that, yeah, I, I did a lot of fishing when I was a teenager. And then I discovered that there were girls. So I quit fishing. <laughs> girls, girls were more interesting than, than fishing when I was a teenager. So... <clears throat> So, uh, no, I'm not uh, an outdoorsman kind of person. I do own uh, Pop Pops. You know what I'm saying? Pop Pops. And I uh, do know how to fish. But I don't know what trout lines are. Because they're not trout lines. They're trot lines. And I got made fun of for because <laughs> I, said, I said trout lines on Alex Jones. So I'm exposed. He's a fake country boy he's not real well if you watch my video on should you move to tennessee and what are the pros and cons of the south then you know where i'm coming from so i'm one of those country boys that likes the city of the country states which is not technically really a country boy is it is it well i you, we could debate that so we've done whole tennessee streams those were a lot of fun <clears throat> we sang Rocky Top. People didn't know what Rocky Top was. If you come to Tennessee, you'll learn what Rocky Top is. I can tell you that. <clears throat> anyway, we got to get into it. What are we? What are we even talking about? See, I don't. I don't with them. I don't with them. East Tennessee people. I don't with them Hill people. Right? We've talked about this. Well, I don't go to the Georgias. Except to travel to Florida. Because the Georgia people, the Georgia bros get mad. Why are you this a Georgia boy? We're going to come up there and do, go mudding in your yard. <laughs> We're going to come up there and put some, put some donuts in your yard, boy. 
with the four wheelers. <clears throat> I don't with them hill people in East Tennessee. I don't with them Georgia places. Why? Why Georgia? Well, it's not really a problem with Georgia itself, except or the people. Except Atlanta sucks, but the problem with Georgia is that it's the worst place in the whole country for allergies. The Tennessee Georgia line is literally the worst place in the entire country for allergies. So no, I don't want to go there. Why'd you come to Atlanta, boy? <clears throat> I've been to Atlanta. Atlanta is like fast and furious every night. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like if you go to Atlanta, you will learn that the brothers love to do like straight up real fast and furious racing at night. So you, if you go to Atlanta at night, you'll see to Tokyo Drifts. You'll see Vin, Vin Diesel, Tyrese Gibson, and Paul Walker somehow even literally out there doing Tokyo Drifts all night long. You'll hear you'll be in a hotel and you'll hear it at one in the morning. You'll be like, I thought Paul Walker wasn't with us anymore. No, he's out there with Tyrese Gibson and Vin Diesel, and they're doing Tokyo Drifts. At 2 in the morning. No joke. People from Atlanta know what I'm talking about. So that's why Florida <clears throat> is like 100 times better. What do we got? Flor we got lizards and Florida man. Shirts like this. The beach. Weck. Wecking ball is in Florida. What else we got in Florida? Uh, no masks. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. Thank you for the... Wow, we already got generous fat super chats. Thank you guys so much. <clears throat> we got Cabbage Patch Clones in Florida. <laughs> Thank you for that one. I like that one. We don't have people doing Tokyo Drifts at night. You know, the Vin Diesel... Vin Diesel's taking a break at his Airbnb. He's not... We, we, Jeff Bezos just moved... To, shout out. What's up, Jeff? He's down, He moved down the street. Jeffrey Bezos is over here. He moved to Florida. <clears throat> we got we got Florida man and Florida woman also. We got them both down here. So there's a lot of good things down here. But unfortunately, you still got some of the pollen pollen boys still on the attack down here. Uh, where's okay? I missed the super chats. There we go. Dang y'all already people uh, getting generous already. Good grief. Yes. I mean, I'm look, it's a celebration day. I mean, the last month is a celebration month, bro. Because what is this probably the it's probably the best Bitcoin liftoff in one month ever. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna talk about Bitcoin all day. I'm only gonna mention a few things in relationship to the um, bad economy and what Bitcoin represents. We're going to be talking about classic black helicopter stuff. We're going to be talking about some old school temple hat things that you might or might not remember. We're going to look at the highlights of uh, the Bustamante podcast, which there's some gems in. We're going to look at some of those gems. We're going to look at a few clips uh, from Michael Saylor on the BTC. We are going to look at uh, some of the articles I didn't get to the other night that I thought were really good I wanted to get to. Thank you guys for all that generosity. And you know what? <clears throat> um, somebody said, your Cat Williams impression is so good that you should just do the whole thing in, as Cat Williams. So I, I, what I, will, I may just show up to the Hollywood event as Cat Williams and do the entire I thought it'd be would it, it would actually be really funny if if I did an event as Cat Williams and just literally repeated Cat Williams' stand up routine. That would be like a metal. I'm just joking. I'm not gonna do that, but it would be funny. Um, I'm joking. I'm not gonna do that. That's that kind of Andy Kaufman level stuff that I do. I do like to do. Uh, one, one time when I did stand up when I was 18, no 17, 18, 17. I don't know somewhere in there. I had this character <laughs> that was a, a a drunk magician, but he was a redneck magician. So uh, everything he did was like failed magic tricks. 
and it was super duper Andy Kaufman. I, I thought it was kind of funny. Still kind of funny to me, but um, that was based on open mic night back in the day. So I, <clears throat> Nashville used to have this club called Comics, C-O-M-I-X. And they would have open mic night back in, in 1997, right? So my buddy and I, we would drive up there. Um, by the way, I did buy a little pop cat just for fun. People like pop cat. I bought a little pop cat just because it's so stupid. Uh, but actually, Steven. Steven has been more fun. And uh, the gains have been a little better. And Steven. Just, I'm just talking about a few hundred dollars. Not, not putting real money into any of that nonsense. But... We gotta talk about the Emerald Tablets, Joe. Hermes Trismegistus. <clears throat> Read the Emerald Tablets as Cat Williams. That would actually be uh, an Andy Kaufman level stunt, right? Cool story, Boomer. Well, I'm not to the story yet. Anyway, so they had uh, they had a stand up open mic night every Friday or Saturday. Anyway, and uh, there was a redneck dude out of jail. And I guess he thought it would be funny to just tell the nastiest jail jokes. And that's where I got the inspiration. Anyway, the whole routine was just, um, shall we say, uh, vagina jokes that revolved around, uh, like, woodland critters that lived in a vagina for like eight minutes. And it's like this, the nastiest prison jokes. I mean, and prison jokes are like a whole other level of, I mean, the uncle jokes are like rated R. Prison jokes are like, just, just like that you get, you, it, it's, it's scary. Like you're actually frightened leaving the comedy club experience when actual biker dudes that used to be in jail are doing open mic night. I'm not joking. It was the nastiest stuff. Anyway, it, but so I thought, well, this actually, actually, this is kind of funny uh, because not his nasty routine, but like the idea of like a dude fresh out of prison <laughs> who thinks he's funny. But it's like the funny part too was like the guy was super, super skinny. He looked like a heroin addict. He actually looked like a rat, and like his routine was about rats, cheese, and vagina. Literally the nastiest thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, but he inspired a wholesome routine, albeit unknown to him, which was my drunk magician. Anyway, it was, it was, it was all right for like a you know 17-year-old doing stand-up. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, we got to get to the, the serious stuff. People are going to be people are going to be hurting my feelings in the chat if we don't make some make some points here. All right, now the first thing popping off this week. For tonight's show, and then I run this off. is this is like half the chicks in in Tennessee. Okay, maybe not now. I don't know if they're getting nasty, but but uh, this is an authentic Tennessee girl experience right here. Maybe she's from Texas, but there's overlap there because Tennesseans settled Texas, by the way. So everybody was freaking out about this, and. <clears throat> So, Samira Khan, who is this, I'm pretty sure she's a Muslim chick, right? And she rage farms. And I noticed this like a year ago. That chick, all she does is rage farm on Twitter. But everybody bought into her rage, and it worked. So, I guess this is just the way Twitter works, is you just put out the things that enrage everyone. Then everyone um, replies to you. <clears throat> Pearl, I guess, really was, what, Tate maybe? Tate and Pearl... And then Tim Pool were all championing the rage farming. And now Samira Khan got in on it. And she's kind of annoying because the whole thing, all she does is like tweet this like Muslim stuff. And like the level of Islamic, it's like what you would expect, right? The level of Islamic tweeting that we would expect. And she followed me and I followed her like a year ago. I didn't know who she was. And I was like, mm, uh, all right, so she's tweeting against degeneracy. But her whole thing is not really tweeting against degeneracy. It's just rage farming. And by the way, I'm from Tennessee. I've been fishing for catfishes. I I've never seen noodling. But 
the these giant catfish are at the bottom of the lake but nobody wants these because they're nasty you can't eat these things but some people get them for fun i don't know because the, the catfish get so big they just like sink to the bottom and just sit there and then i run this arm between their gill and their gill plate when they're this big you can run it between without hurting the gills because see it's between the gills and the gill plate arm goes through gills are not messed up because all the pressure is going on that gill plate the fish is fine We'll turn her loose. Sorry, Mr. Mark. I know you want to eat some, but this is a big female. We got to turn her loose. I hear you, babe. Anyway, yeah, that's like half the people in Tennessee. <laughs> like, nothing weird about that at all, but like uh, online Muslims are like, what is this? This is a one, 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 equal one. <laughs> like, Muslims are losing their mind over this and thinking that this is like not femininity. I mean, half the people from Tennessee are involved in fishing, hunting, gamesmanship, wood living, you know, harmonizing with woodland critters, that kind of stuff, and eating them. So nothing weird about this. This is just normal Tennessee living in life. I don't I, To me, it was odd that people found that so crazy. But speaking of Lord Voldemort, well, what I want to talk about, which we can't really talk about because... It's not exactly mm, allowable, I guess you could say, over here. But as you saw yesterday, no, yes, no, was it Sunday? Saturday or Sunday, there was a big emergency report. And the first 40 minutes of this Voldemort report, Lord Voldemort report, was about the classics. And Lord Voldemort is an expert on this topic of, <clears throat> shall we say, more more marshmallow law marshmallow law there we go that's my code word uh, he, he knows everything about this um i remember and probably many of you have been watching lord voldemort's M marshmallow law reports for 20 years <clears throat> and um we're starting to see some things rolling out that very closely mirror and match up to this very thing. Marshmallow law. You know what I mean, right? I'm not talking about stay puffed. I'm talking about actually we're entering into a situation where because everybody's a bunch of uh, uh, chunky dudes and chicks, uh, it's not martial law. It's actually literally going to be marshmallow law <laughs> because everybody's fat, right? So we're going into marshmallow law. It's going to be like Wally, right? And it turns out in the, I think, New York subways, they're starting to try to inspect everybody's bags just because there's so much crime now. And so the <clears throat> intentional flooding collapsing that goes on then justifies the system's police, S-T-A-T-E, crackdown stuff, you see. So this is called pressure from above, pressure from below. Folks, unbelievable. We're going to have marshmallow law. Unbelievable. I've got stacks and stacks of police state marshmallow law. That's because everybody's a bunch of fat marshmallow people. Not really. Thank you for those super chats. Everybody's being very generous. Thank you for the mods up in the house holding down the fort. Holding down a fart. <laughs> Actually, Beavis and Budden impressions are, they were so worn out in the 90s that I kind of like it now. You know what I mean? It's like nobody does it anymore. So it's kind of okay now. And uh, I watched a Beavis and Butt, a new Beavis and Butt had the other day. It was pretty funny. It was, it was the one where they go deer hunting. Uh, it, it was funny. Uh. <clears throat> anyway, so we were talking then about this. Now, you can go over here and watch this. I'm not I'm not going to be able to link it or any of that stuff. But uh, Lord V brought up several things that you may not have heard about. So let's do a let's do a fact checking. I'm going to fact check you. 
I will fact check you. <laughs> Let's find out. About, but I'm sure we've all heard of State Department Memorandum 200. That's Henry Kissinger's memo that had to deal with the depopulation of the world. Henry Kissinger's Depop memo. We all know that one. But here's another one. This is 7277. Let's engage in fact checking. State Department Memorandum 7277, Disarmament. Disarmament. Is this real? Is this made up? You made that up. That ain't real. It's all made up, boy. Making up shit. Making it up. United Nations Program for General and Complete Disarmament of a Peaceful World. Well, why the heck is this all sideways? So there you go. It is real. Unfortunately, it's all sideways. <clears throat> Further reduced nuclear war disarmament. And presumably, it's not just nuclear disarmament. Presumably, it's also uh, all forms of the stupid PDF. I can't read it sideways. Let's see what this is. State Department Memorandum 200. I mean, not 200. 7277. Oh, interesting. Dag Hammarskjöld. Remember him? Uh, actual uh, Fabian Socialist Marxist. Dag Hammarskjöld. Uh, colonialism. Uh-oh. So it's like social justice stuff back in the 1960s. Okay, disarmament. United Nations plan for disarmament. Okay, but is this 7277? I can't tell. Uh, where is... All I want is 7277. And I want to see the... That's not it. Is this it? Freedom from War, Vanderbilt? Maybe this is it. Come on, ooh yeah. I try to tell you so, but I guess you didn't know. Baby, now I got the flow. What's up with these PDFs, man? They're not up. They're not uploading. The drive to disarm CIA.gov. Uh oh. What the heck? What's this? FOIA request. Disarming America, the worst possible font ever invented. What the heck is I can't even read that. What the hell is even that? Arms Control Disarmament Act of 1961. Okay, maybe this is it. The USC 2551. I don't know if that's the same one. So the, the Arms Control Disarmament Act, ACDA, Government Act, blah, blah, blah. This is not very helpful. Nuclear safeguards, no. So, <clears throat> I'm just looking for a summary. These government documents are so annoying. But... So the first document, this is it. This is the actual correct PDF. I cannot read this sideways though. So I'll put this in the chat for you guys. This is another government website. And uh, this has to do with what Lord Voldemort mentions. So that one is real. It's just all freaking sideways. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to download this stupid thing. All right, whatever, we'll do that another time. Now, that's one thing. Then we had, uh, and I remember I was listening at the time, there was the breaking of the MIAC report. What was it, 14 years ago? MIAC legislative report. Missouri information. No, not the Missouri Highway Patrol. That's not it. Uh, it's the one about internment. Yeah, this is it. So this one has to do with the militias basically 
saying anything uh, militia related, right? Is is which is all infiltrated by not every militia, but it's a bunch of feds and weirdos, right? Okay, so you can look up my ag report, and then um, as we covered at the time, remember this old bad boy. Remember Jade H E L M. And this was a multi-state southern border, interesting, series of war games. Everybody remembers it at the time. <clears throat> Let's see what the official uh, account of Jade Helm was, according to the mainstream media. No, it's not uh, secretly planning to take over Texas. The Pentagon uh, made a public announcement that Jade Helm was... Uh, multi-state training exercise January, July 15th to 19th, 15th, to, to September 15th, 2000 and what was this? 15, somewhere in there. Um, was it 15? Yeah, 2015. <laughs> The exercise is taking place across seven states, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. Okay, so not every border state. Uh, the exercises take place primarily in Texas, according to unclassified requests for training Special Operations Command, large undeveloped areas of land, including access to many towns. U.S. military is consistently doing training exercises throughout. Yeah, we know that. Uh, what is the thing with Jade Helm? The March 24 press release of the Army, Jade Helm was described as a routine training exercise to maintain a high level of readiness. The reason given was that particular states, including Texas, um, possess unique terrain and the soldiers need to familiarize themselves there for overseas operations. And then noticeably, they talk about uh, Lord Voldemort. Interesting. So all the way back to this time, Lord Voldemort's mentioned. And that had to do with mastering the human domain. And that is also a real thing. But it wasn't just mastering the human domain that was kind of the overarching. It's this full spectrum dominance. This is what F. William Ingdahl's book. This is the old, uh, I think Rumsfeld mentioned full spectrum dominance as the Pentagon's plan uh, 20 years ago, right around the time of the big nine. Um, but this was another paper was it an Air Force paper? So they put out these uh, U.S. Army paper. Mastering the Human Domain uh, Army paper put out in 2014. Identity Operations for Strategic Land Power, Mastering the Human Domain. And this is just talking about a total approach to um, full spectrum dominance. Since the fall of Berlin Wall, the strategic environment and corresponding threats to national security have dramatically changed. No longer national priorities dominated by superpower, but increasingly loose networks of terrorist, transnational criminals, and non-state actors make up the, quote, human domain, within the human domain. We have shifted into uh, fifth generation, new generational warfare. This is fifth generational warfare. Um, talks about economic stuff strategic uh, approaches, blah, blah, blah. So mastering the human domain, um, even the Austin American statesman, I think. Yes, and, which is liberal. 2016 was noting that Jade Helm is part of human domain operations. So what's the point? Well, we're starting to see then that a lot of these exercises might have had their termin terminus, their apogee, their purpose, their telos, in things that might be on the horizon. And those things might be uh, large-scale crime. They might be um, economic collapse. They might be um, election issues. They might be uh, border issues. All of those things might play into what was happening 10 years ago with Jade Helm. My specific theory about Jade Helm, I listened to quite a few 
podcast. I studied it quite a bit. Um, I think it had to do with mapping the uh, response online. So what were people doing in response to this drill being publicized and made massive on a massive scale? And then mapping probably through AI or through, uh, you know, large scale tracking, how people were receiving this. So, but that's my, my theory. There were people arguing at the time of Jade Helm that it had to do with, um, like, just AI type mapping. That also makes sense, though, that now, now that AI has really rolled out, it also makes more sense, right, that the AI theory of Jade Helm um, is important. But that's, I don't have any proof of that. It's just a theory. So... You know, a lot of these things are theories because we never really know exactly what the plans are. And certainly the military is always running drills. We know that. And Lord Voldemort uh, told, you can go and listen to that. He talks about uh, back in the day, he was covering Delta Force drills. And the Delta Force drills included black helicopters. And it was filmed. And you can find uh, local news footage about those th so those are actually real, right? There are those kinds of helicopters and crafts. <clears throat> um, one of the many, quote, conspiracies that uh, do have some basis in reality. Now, it's not everything that all the disinfo quacks and kooks say it is. So anyway, that uh, is the first topic I wanted to cover tonight that we didn't really get to. Well, we already covered this weirdo. We're not going to cover that. Um, what do I want to talk about next? Uh, I wanted to remind you too, because there's this prevailing narrative, prevailing narrative that, and it's, it's a lot of times people that criticize the CIA. We saw this in the part two that went up last night. Um, so if you're looking for the part two to OSS, CIA, Dune, and uh, Religion and the CIA, the Graziano book. Uh, that part two went up last night for subscribers where I broke down his book, his academic text. It's not a conspiracy text. And we looked at the relationship of the OSS and CIA to religion in the second half of that book from um, Vietnam, Ed Lansdale, Tom Dooley, um, more Vatican information, all the way up until Iran, the Ayatollah. What exactly was going on in the 1979 revolution in Iran, was that a CIA failure? Or was it, as many argue, CIA failures oftentimes end up being the greatest successes? And why is that? Well, think about it. When there's giant intelligence failures, what comes next? Well, if we'd only had more funding, if we'd only had 23 more zillion dollars of public taxpayer money, this intelligence failure never would have happened. Give us the money and it won't happen, we promise. So it's kind of like holding people hostage by like not doing your job. I mean, is, is that crazy, right? So hence why the greatest intelligence failures become the greatest intelligence successes. Now, others argue, however, that the 1979 Iran revolution was the October surprise of the neocons to get rid of Jimmy Carter. That's also possible. And so the Bush, Reagan, neocon side, Team B, uh, all of that stuff to do with the CIA, BCCI, Perhaps that was the motivation, uh, and this seems also possible. I don't have any hard views on that, but you can go watch the part two. But <clears throat> one thing that comes up in a lot of these books, whether it's the Graziano text or whether it's the modern accounts of the CIA or, or leftist critiques, this is very common in the left critiques of CIA, is that they will mistake the CIA for a right-wing organization. Now, the reason they make that mistake is that they buy into the dialectic and they also tend to think that anything opposing, say, Sovietism or communism is therefore right wing. Or they make the mistake because certain people in the CIA throughout its many decades, because they might have had kind of right wing tendencies or beliefs that therefore the institution was right wing. I don't think that's true at all. So, for example, oh, the, the left critiques will often point to, look, uh, they were bringing Werner von Braun over, and look, we've got 
the usage uh, by Dulles and, uh, you know, Donovan and all these characters of the Reinhard Galen organization and all this stuff. And then they, they assumed then that, oh, see, it's a right wing thing. Well, they weren't <laughs> adopting and utilizing those guys because they had some conviction <clears throat> of right wing sentiment and belief. And the deeper you read into the literature, you can find this very easily. Now, there are, you can say, okay, William Colby, probably a legit right winger. Um, William Casey, maybe. Um, maybe you could find a couple more of them. That, but Bill Donovan, not really right winger. Most of these guys are CFR, uh, you know, pragmatic lawyer people. Ed Lansdale, not really right winger. Tom Dooley, uh, actually Skittles, pretended to be a trad cat, not really a right winger. So you see what I'm saying? It's not authentic. I mean, it's like they they they, they think that oh they 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 have paper clips, so it's like tr trad cats running everything, and they're like crazy fascists. Yeah, maybe there was a couple of these people who liked the idea of that. Maybe Dulles liked that. Maybe they brought. I mean, but the institution and the ideology ultimately is not conservative or right wing. And that's why I appreciated this recent academic American Affairs Journal essay. It's pretty long. I'll, I will encourage you to go read it. And it talks about understanding the CIA at the time of today. The Gen Z, you know, President Bobo era CIA. And how it's woke. And the idea here is, oh, well... Uh, this is this institution has been co-opted and now it's what no no you misunderstand it was never right wing it was never conservative and this article makes this point i am a woman of color i work for the cia i'm a cisgender millennial mom and i have been hired by the cia it's like well and then it gets into the dialectics of power and it talks about you know oh powerful women in america Jackie Onassis and Catherine Hepburn, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but the reason this article is so good is because it's an establishment academic intelligence journal article. <clears throat> and it talks about how, wait a minute. Oh, the CIA, you see, is the vanguard of liberalism. Oh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You, who didn't know this? And where are people getting this idea? They're getting it from idiot left critiques that the CIA is this right-wing organization. No, they're not. Here's the journal article, if you want to read it. <clears throat> and that's why it's always important to bring up. In 1985, the height of the moral majority's power, <clears throat> decades before a 30-something CIA agent would call him, herself a cisgender millennial in a new CIA recruitment video, internal CIA reports expressed great hope in France's new philosophers, particularly Foucault, postmodern Skittles men. Yes, the emerging field of queer theory pioneered concepts like cisgender. That doesn't sound very right-wing to me. New left radicalism, Vietnam protests. Let's bring in who? Who do they bring in? People like Gloria Steinem, the mother of American feminism, you could say. The symbol of American feminism. Uh, let's just skip to the Gloria part. <clears throat> CIA and the New Left. Feminist Gloria Steinem went so far as to characterize the CIA as a liberal, nonviolent, honorable institution. Oh, yeah. Here's your insane right-wing, uh, tiny mustache man organization. And the, only, the, the left thinks this stupid stuff because this institution, at times, works with everyone. There's no, there is no idea. What's the... Uh, Bene Gesserit Mama say in Dune 2 there is no side there's only power duh hence why the article is called the dialectic of power but idiot conservatives have thought oh, I'm going to join the CIA to fight against the commies because they're right wing no they're not an idiot lefties we got to fight against right wing CIA. Maybe we could join the CIA like good Gloria Steinem because she's a good liberal. 
Gloria Steinem would know because she admits she admits to working with the CIA through its front organization, the Independent Research Service. Yeah, because they wanted to steer feminism. <clears throat> and the greatest part of this article is that it notes, let me see where they put it. And, <clears throat> yeah, here we go. <clears throat> it notes what uh, no one seems to be able to figure out. Right, because the CIA was heavily invested in mid 20th century uh, art and cultural production through the Congress for Cultural Freedom. We've called, we've talked about this for at least ten years. Francis Donner Saunders, all that. <clears throat> it was involved in steering the non-communist left more broadly, putting its tendrils into anything anti-Soviet. But, get this, the CIA was anti-communist or anti-Soviet, but never conservative. Does everyone see this? Yes, exactly. Finally, someone, only I guess intelligence researchers figure this out. It's not a right-wing organization. Just because some goober trad cats ran it doesn't mean it was this right-wing, tiny mustache man. The only thing that the, the left people, the the classical progressive left critics of the CIA, the only thing they're getting right there is that the CIA <coughs> had a liberal adoption. They're, they're kind of basically liberals, but they're adopting elements of tiny mustache man's networks, Galen networks, philosophy, the Malthusian stuff, the eugenics Malthusian stuff. That's They're taking that. Doesn't it make them a right-wing organization, dummies? These, who cannot see this? This is so obvious. And this is why they supported Foucault, postmodernists, all of this crazy stuff. Uh, Playboy magazine, feminist magazine, Miss magazine. Why? Because all of that stuff helps depop. Duh. Of course they promote that stuff. And if you read Miles Copeland's uh, uh, Game of Nations, he says, if you want to understand everything we're up to, just go read Bertrand Russell and the CFR about depop. That's it. It's not a bunch of old oh, cool spy stuff. James Bond. Oh, oh. No, no, no. It's a bunch of criminals, dude. Now, <clears throat> there's that. And there's that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So now, <clears throat> when we come over here to Bustamante, I wish I'd written the time stamps on every one of these comments i didn't i, I wrote timestamps though on the main point so we'll get to these main points first main point i thought was funny was <laughs> let's go to 48 okay human psychology this is great because <laughs> because what he says here is <clears throat> he says uh you know, everybody's interested in they, they love clicking on these videos about Ooh, can I detect if somebody's lying from their, you know, microaggressions and expressions? And okay, there's some people that are really good at this or whatever, but everybody thinks they're going to be some kind of like master manipulator person by watching a bunch of YouTube videos and figuring out if somebody's lying to them on the basis of their, you know, facial expressions and whatever. <clears throat> so this part of the, of the discussion is actually interesting. By the way, uh, thank you guys for the super chats. If you do want to support the stream, you can do so by the Super Chat function right there. Jethro, the mod, or you can look there. I put the link in as well. No, that's the wrong link. That's the <coughs> other link to the article. <coughs> I was, <coughs> I'm consistently surprised at the honesty of what Bustamante admits in all these podcasts. And so I've listened to about three or four of them now. And, um, you know, a lot of the stuff, I mean, it doesn't go super deep, but a lot of the stuff that he admits is like stuff that you hear me say and people still think is kind of conspiratorial, crazy. Um, and like, well, here's the guy f operative saying it. What are you talking about? This is like not even that controversial. <clears throat> 
So the first point, the, the, the most interesting element of this whole podcast isn't the America might collapse and you better leave it or whatever his theory is about he's leaving in 2027, which is relevant and interesting. We covered that last night. The best part about this whole podcast is the human psychology stuff he talks about. Because everything he talks about is how it's all just manipulation. And he says all the techniques of manipulation that the CIA engages in and intelligence operations and handlers and informants and espionage and compromise, it's just psychology. And he says, by the way, we just apply this to sales. So it's really just about selling stuff, uh, which is still relevant. I mean, if you're a business owner or whatever, this is a relevant podcast, but this this cracked me up because I'm listening to this and I'm like, and I don't really ever pay attention in debates, particularly to of my opponent's body language, right? Like I'm I'm usually interested in thinking about the arguments and what I'm going to reply with and this kind of stuff. So uh, I, if I'm so let's take the Jake debate. I'm taking notes in the Jake debate, right? I'm not really watching, although I did notice that Jake basically just squirmed nonstop like he was in a hot seat. And then, then when I was listening to Bustamante talking here, he basically explains why this is. And you guys are going to crack up because you're going to be like, oh, that's exactly what Jake was doing. With people who are unskilled liars, it's much easier to find generic tells. There are people who you've heard of. Being on the hot seat, mm -hmm. which is a phrase we use in Western culture pretty often. Like when someone is under pressure, we call them being in a hot seat. When you've got an unskilled liar, they can't stop moving their body. They just, they're always uncomfortable and they just keep moving and they keep twitching and they keep fidgeting and it's like they're sitting in a hot seat. That is one of the biggest tells of an unskilled liar. And again, so, first thing I thought of when I heard that was the Jake debate. <laughs> so <clears throat> now that doesn't mean that Jake was necessarily overtly lying, but it can signify that the person is extremely uncomfortable and not sure what they need to do in this uh, situation, right? And, I mean, that dude was like, you know, was was he was just freaking dancing the whole time. I mean, he was a squirmy mess the whole time. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and, uh, anyway, that, that I thought that was an interesting insight into the body, the right. body language, right, of the Jake debate. I mean, he was just all over the place. He didn't know the basic difference. All over squirming. If you missed the Jake debate, it's okay. Uh, it went probably as you expected. So, was the, what do you mean on mute? What's muted? I'm muted or Jake's muted? Did y'all not hear the Bustamante clip? All's muted? Let me see. Shouldn't be muted. Did y'all hear? It was only like 30 seconds of Bustamante. Did, did y'all not hear him talking? You didn't? Okay, let's see. I'll play it again. It's only like 30 seconds. Let's go back here. Let's make sure you can hear him. With people who are unskilled liars, it's much easier to find generic tells. There are people who you've heard of being on the hot seat. Western culture pretty often. Like when someone is under pressure, we call them being in a hot seat. When you've got an unskilled liar, they can't stop moving their body. Like they're just, they're always uncomfortable and they just keep moving and they keep twitching and they keep fidgeting. And it's like they're sitting in a hot seat. That is one of the biggest tells of an unskilled liar. Hmm. And again, anybody who's ever had like a, a six year old or an eight year old or a 12 year old try to lie to them, they know what that looks like. They can't make eye contact. They do a lot of like verbal uh, noises that aren't actual words. They can't get comfortable. They keep moving around. They keep shifting, shifty. Mm -hmm. Those are all, all those words came from real world examples of an unskilled liar trying to lie. But you don't need micro expressions of the face or to know which way their eyes are tracking in order to pick up on that. Going back to your training then, what were some of the other most important transfer? <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out what the, the, that Bustamante clip shouldn't be that low. Uh, all the settings look correct. Um, let me check one thing real quick here. Maybe the MIDI MIDI setup is wrong. Oh, it's probably the MIDI setup. All right, let's yeah. 
oh, so this freaking Apple settings, dude, they ups, they reset themselves every freaking update. It drives me insane because there's like 20 different things that can change when there's an update. Okay, let's try it now. I think the sound will be right. Let's see. With people who are unskilled liars, it's much easier yeah, to find generic tells. There are people who you've heard of being on the hot seat. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a phrase we use in Western culture pretty often. Like when someone is under pressure, we call them being in a hot seat. When you've got an unskilled liar, they can't stop moving their body. Like they're just, they're always uncomfortable and they just keep moving and they keep twitching and they keep fidgeting. And it's like they're sitting in a hot seat. That is one of the biggest tells of an unskilled liar. And again, anybody who's ever had like a a six-year-old or an eight-year-old or a 12-year-old try to lie to them, they know what that looks like. They can't make eye contact. They do a lot of you know, like verbal uh, <laughs> noises that aren't actual words. <laughs> AKA a Jake debate. <laughs> I mean, do you notice he wouldn't, he wouldn't look the screen or me in, in the eye. I noticed that. That's one thing I did notice in the debate, which I didn't really think about, is that he basically hardly ever looked at the camera he was always looking off to the side in the in the debate but in part three and last but not least jay was not able to actually deal with the ethity aqidah and it's because he hasn't even read our text before the debate he needed to delay it so people were wondering what the delay was it was because of him he wasn't able to read an english translation of an by the way, I want to do want to address that he that is a lie because he knows that in the DMs I said, "Hey, um, there's a book that both of us probably want. It's not out yet by the printer." So that was the Ibn Tamiya translation. And by the way, he has to read translations. He doesn't read Arabic. And so we were waiting for an academic text to be published in English, which he also was interested in. So I didn't delay the debate because. I didn't, I, I was lazy and I was just doing, I was scared and lazy. He knows that, but I just let this go because it's not worth arguing over DMs, right? But I mean, all of the squirming. It just says that, you know, no one sees. So coming in from Dalil says, Jake, why do you worship? It is that. Everybody heard him say it's self-evident because it exists. And That's we don't. Said. That is what he you said. He said, how do we know? And I said, we know it through a divinely created apparatus. That's, well, that's how we know it. We, we don't know, know that it directly. Yet. This is your starting point. Your good friend, Anias, right? Yeah. Father Deacon Anias. Which are <clears throat> anyway, listening to Bustamante was like, this is the Jake debate, right? They can't get comfortable. They keep moving around. They keep shifting. Shifty. Mm -hmm. Those are all, all Shifty. those words came from <laughs> real world examples of an unskilled liar trying to lie but you don't need micro expressions of the face or to know which way their eyes are tracking in order to pick up on that going back to your training then what were some of the other all right so anyway i thought that was funny the next point <clears throat> was you heard me mention um you know principles of compromise and mice and all that um he calls it rice which is better than the acronym mice and he says rice is better because rice is reward ideology compromise ego uh, let's see that's let's see 52 let's listen to that order of the strength that they have over people so if you were really trying to get someone to do something you'd focus on this core motivation over that one yes absolutely ideology is the strongest ego is the second strongest reward is the third strongest and coercion is the weakest this is one of the things that movies get wrong Movies try to make it look like you can blackmail somebody or hold a gun to their head and get them to do what you want them to do. In the real world, once you hold a gun to someone's head, they never trust you again. You can never get them to do something twice. Whereas if you... And by the way, we should add that there's another video where he actually admits that Jeff Stein McEffrey was a foreign intelligence asset. So there you go. Exactly. So he, he can tell this. He, it's obvious. He admits it. But um, this is interesting because him saying that compromise uh, or coercion, the C in mice or rice, is the least effective does not mean that it's not used. He's talking about the CIA's perspective on these things. And in this interview, he also, he also says that 
he argues that the CIA and British intelligence do not themselves engage in sexpionage because of the fact that the agents and the, the handlers, everybody's uh, then invested and there's too much emotion. Then he says, however, foreign intelligence agencies have no qualms about doing this, particularly Russia does it. We've known about this from the time of uh, NKVD, che Olga Chekhova, you know, Red Sparrow, watch the J-Law movie. <clears throat> Um, Chinese intelligence has no problem engaging in sex Um But I don't believe, I, I think the, the, the out here is that the CIA does not train its operatives and people to engage in this. They might farm this out to other people. That's the key point, here, right? So Operation Midnight Climax, CIA and organized crime engaging in uh, dosing Johns with LSD unexpectedly. Oh, well, it's not CIA agents involved in the sexpionage. Oh, okay. Yeah, good job. You're just using, uh, you know, thoughts and hoes and <clears throat> boats and hoes, boats, right? But that doesn't mean they're not engaging in the, the blackmail and the information. Same thing with British intelligence, Elm, Elm Guest House and all this stuff, Savile. And by the way, these agencies are all working and entwined and doing things together anyway. So, but at least Bustamante does admit in one of these other clips, Let's see if it pops up. Yeah, here it is right here. Jeff Son McAfee was most likely a foreign spy. Well, yeah. And uh, if you read this, it's a pretty much a no-brainer. In fact, it was the Ari Ben Menashe who himself says that he was <laughs> about Jeff Stein. Right, so there you go. Our next point is uh, what Rice, you're wrong, Rice. Appeal to their ideology. Doing this is good for your country. Doing this is good for your family. Doing this is good for your health. If you can appeal to someone's ideology, they'll do what you tell them to do for a long time because they'll trust you. Is this really the, the essence of manipulation then? That is the essence of motivation and manipulation, the same coin. You'll hear me come back to this because one of the things that people really struggle with outside of intelligence is they feel like they have to label things as good or bad. When you have moral flexibility, you take away good and bad. Everything just becomes a question of utility. This is a really important point because these uh, intelligence agencies are not operating on good, bad, wrong, right, black and white situations. It's all about malleability, moral malleability, flexibility, and compromise. And that's exactly crucial to this point and, what, and something we have to understand about how these operations work. And again, we covered a lot of this last night. This is this human psychology element. This is, this is rice, reward. Uh, ideology, compromise, and ego. Productivity. If it's if you need someone to do something and you can motivate them, then you should. But if you need someone to do something and you can't motivate them, that's a green light to manipulate them because you still need them to do what you need them to do. If you feel bad about manipulating somebody, you are not going to do well in the intelligence world. How might you, so you said the ideology is the strongest of the four, of, core, of the core motivations. How might you go about finding out someone's ideology in the context of business and life? A lot of times people will volunteer it to you. There's, there's two ways. If you're a keen observer, people will volunteer it to you. You've already volunteered that you are ideologically predisposed to fatherhood. You've already talked about it. The reason that you're worried about fucking up your kids that you don't even have yet is because you're thinking about fatherhood. So clear... <clears throat> Now, I, I, again, I have to give this guy props because he actually says a lot of true things. Like <laughs> this whole interview, he's like, I mean, even to the point of like, you know, the, America might collapse. I'm going to leave in 2027. I mean, he, he, no, he, <coughs> I don't know this person. I'm just, I'm not saying he's, I don't know. But the most interesting thing in this interview is that he says that he's recruited. <clears throat> Initially, he thought because 
Uh, they thought he was like super cool and smart and effective and all this kind of stuff. And he is a talented, you know, intelligent person. But he said that he was actually recruited because he was damaged and traumatized. Yes, you heard me correct. Recruits are often recruited because they're broken and damaged and thus useful. But they're not actually too special in terms of who they are. <clears throat> that was a, a very important and fascinating admission. So if you're trying to navigate and understand a lot of this higher level manipulation, you know, espionage sphere of things, and, and particularly how it relates to geopolitics, that's really important to understand. And that's, again, you know, if you watch movies like Most Wanted Man, I mean, that's really the role that Philip Seymour Hoffman plays in, in a very uh, effective way, right? It, it demonstrates the points that Bustamante is making here. He talks about um, the key to having an upper hand in understanding the world, business, your life, whatever you, whatever you want to apply these uh, human um, psychology techniques to. He says one of the keys to this is understanding that most people are operating in their own relativistic bubble. Yes, he actually goes into basic philosophy as this former mini multi-year CIA operative. And he starts talking about epistemology and philosophy. Yes, you heard me right. What? Why? It seems like what you talk about. Well, yeah, because exactly a lot of what I talk about is spot on. Now, he doesn't use a lot of fancy philosophical jargon because he's trying to break this down for normies and you know the average person out there who doesn't know anything about philosophy and is not really educated and the way he breaks it down instead of talking about relativism and objectivism he says i'm going to use the term of perception versus perspective and these are just kind of ambiguous terms that he's giving his own uh distinctions and weight to and by perspective he says or excuse me by perception he says that's the subjective element he says, most people live their whole lives in a cage, in a box of pure relativism and subjectivism. That makes them creatures of emotion. They operate on the basis of emotion. They react on the basis of emotion. If you're involved in, for example, crypto, Bitcoin, all that kind of stuff, or maybe even stonks, you probably have noticed that sometimes you're tempted. You see Bitcoin going down. Oh, I better dump it. I'm going to lose all my money. That's reacting on the basis of emotion and Bustamante says in this interview that to make fart noises with your hand when you start getting nervous no he doesn't say that. I'm just joking and he says that <clears throat> the key to being effective in not just the espionage stuff but in anything is to have control of your emotions not react on the basis of emotions but to be cool and react on the basis of objective logic as far as you can get to it. Okay, we're never going to have a perfectly logical and objective approach to things. But what we want to try to do is get the objective view, which gets us out of the prison of a purely subjective perception. That is no different than saying <clears throat> what philosophers say when they say that relativism is a prison and is self-refuting. It's everything you hear me saying. This is just a CIA operative putting it in another language, in another series of terminology to express the same point. Real world versus fantasy. Most people live in a fantasy. Most people are living in the idea that their mental ideas of the world are reality. So they think that they're a furry. They think that they're this or that. They believe that Bobo is uh, out to help them and the big pharma companies love them and they're all the normie stuff or whatever their perspective, their subjective perspective. But most of the time, these people, 99% of the time are wrong and they make poor decisions. They don't invest their money. They don't think long term. They don't think logically. They don't think rationally. They think like NPC bots, cogs in the system. 
Bustamante says this in this interview. The key to being successful in any endeavor <clears throat> is to not operate on the basis of emotion. Now, again, think about this. This applies across the board to anything you're involved in. This applies to <clears throat> figuring out how to get a date. If you're a guy and you're a beta and you're a prisoner to your emotions and you react emotionally to when a girl disses you or turns you down, you are not going to be successful in finding a date, getting a girl's phone number, whatever. You will fail. So you have to have some level of mastery of your emotions, some level of self-control to handle even something as basic as that, which people nowadays can't do. They don't even know how to do this. They can't figure this out. <clears throat> if you're investing your money, you're going to have to have self-control, not act crazy on the base of emotion when <coughs> your stonks and your Bitcoin go down. Well, I better dump my Bitcoin. Now, in the last cycle, <clears throat> multiple people which I'm not a registered financial advisor. <clears throat> People didn't listen to what I said. They saw Bitcoin go wild and then drop. And several of the boomers <coughs> that I know, I'm not dissing anybody. I love my boomers, my beautiful, beautiful boomers. Many of them dumped it. <clears throat> I said, don't dump it. What are you doing? It's going down. Yeah, that's when you buy more. <laughs> what are you talking about? Dumping it. You're making a mistake. And what happened? So in other words, they were trading on the basis of emotion. Fear. Oh, I'm scared. It's going to go to zero. Oh, I saw a boomer on CNBC. He said it's going to zero. <laughs> yeah, right. The freaking boomer that just passed away saying the most nonsense gibberish. What was his name? Dan Pena. Remember this ridiculous person? I got to play this clip because this is the perfect example of what I'm I talking about. This, this, he has to be the worst boomer of all time. This guy takes the cake for worst boomer ever. Worst boomer ever. Let's see. Watch this. Remember this? 9.9.999% 9 .9 .9 .9 of people that own Bitcoin are fucking morons. Retarded, imbeciles. That's it. Yeah, good job, Boomer. Good job. Now, this is one of these Boomer stonkmen investors, right? <clears throat> this guy was so insane. He had this whole, this whole stupid... Who owned Bitcoin, or who started Bitcoin, You and you had Bitcoin, you couldn't sleep at night. I know. 100%. And when the real founder of Bitcoin comes out, it is my humble opinion, and there's nothing humble about me, Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. <laughs> and do you remember who, behind it. Do you know who, do you remember who he said was behind it? <laughs> We got to find the clip of who was behind Really it. behind Bitcoin. You would run as fast as you fucking could to sell it. I know. 100%. If you knew who owned Bitcoin. Or who, Bitcoin, Boomer? Bitcoin, tell us. You And you had Bitcoin, you couldn't sleep at night. Tell us, Boomer, who? I know. Yeah, we know you know. 100%. And when the real founder of Bitcoin comes out, it is my humble opinion, and there's nothing humble about me, Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. One day. And I, I, my Good job. Now, <clears throat> the best video is the video where he says who is behind it. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go. Let's see if this is it. You know who's behind Bitcoin? Putin. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Boomers, if you're mad, 
This is where you concede that boomers deserve the jokes. Okay, this is the ultimate admission. And I am the father and grandfather creator of boomer jokes. Literally. They come from me. I started boomer jokes, I'm being 100% serious, 10 years ago. Putin created Bitcoin. I created boomer jokes 10 years ago. Okay, that's a joke. Putin didn't create Bitcoin, by the way. I don't know if you know that. Let's, we got to hear this. This is a classic. <clears throat> by the way, do, do you guys not know who Dan Pena is? This is like the ultimate boomer power investor, man. Right? He's like the archetype of today's finance bro. Okay, the finance bros are birthed from this creature. Like the ultimate internet, or like the, not internet, the ultimate, uh, what do you even call this guy? Didn't he just pass away, by the way? Or is he still, is this person still alive? How fucking delusional. What the fuck are you, I mean, what, what kind of drugs are you taking? You're not anywhere near. Look, he's got, what's, <laughs> look at his audience. <laughs> the trillion dollar so man. Who falls for this? Who in their in the right mind, half a million subscribers, for this idiotic boomer to scream and cuss you out? He's literally just sitting there cussing his audience out, and they they love it. I, I mean, should I just should I dress up like freaking Colonel Sanders? He looks like freaking Colonel. He looks like a cross between Anthony Hopkins and Colonel Sanders up there, right? Clarice. Clarice, don't invest in Bitcoin. Clarice, the father beans, the father Bitcoin beans, Clarice. He's up there cussing everybody out, wearing his ridiculous Jordan Peterson costumes. He looks like a, dude looks like freaking one of the midgets out of uh, Wizard of Oz. Right? He looks like some kind of weirdo, like like some, some character that's going to pop up in a Lewis Carroll novel, right? With the Mad Hatter or some shit. Right. The fuck are you, I'm how much? How much? How much money do you think these idiots paid to get this? To have this old boomer scream at him? That's why he's screaming at him because he knows they're idiots. Because they probably paid five thousand dollars for him to scream at him, and he's up there like he's thinking, "You freaking idiots! You paid five thousand dollars for my money course to have me scream at you." I mean, what? What kind of drugs are you taking? You're not anywhere near as bright as you think. Let's see. I see one, two dudes. And a woman, dude, uh, and then one one bald headed boomer over here, and then there's oh there's a bald dude up front. I told you this before. You're just not. Dude, I pull more people than Dan Pena's pulling. Your whole model, your whole demeanor is you think they should be inspired to meet you. So far, you haven't met anybody. Yet. Now, how can I know that eight years, ago, three years? Dude, he looks like a damn steampunk character. Uh, you know what I want. I want a damn steampunk character screaming and cussing at me to get my finances straight, and that's gosh darn it how I'm gonna make money. You go to you. He's on motherfucking Freud, that's what. You have the tools to do it, and not that many do it. And it's pretty fucking easy. What I'm saying now, I said when you were here before. My story has not changed in 30 years. But you people here. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's the problem, bro. <laughs> you're still <laughs> talking about how Bitcoin is a scam. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a damn cross between. You look like Hannibal as the Mad Hatter, dude. Come on. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway, Putin is behind Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Putin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can't believe I found that, but perfect. You want to learn? You want to make some money? Well, the first thing you got to have is a boomer screaming in your face. That's the only way to make money. This is why it's such a great vindication. It's like the greatest own ever, dude. All these boomers talking about how Bitcoin going to zero. Really, you are ideologically predisposed to what it means to be a responsible father. 
you want to be seen as a responsible father. Mm-hmm. That plays into your ego as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure when you're talking to your partner, if you guys are already looking at... Where All right, we- that's not the clip I'm looking for. All right, so the next clip, let's see. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, one hour, five minutes. Let's go to this next part where it gets interesting. <clears throat> Training yourself to think rationally versus uh, emotional, I think. It is. It, it takes uh, momentum. So what ends up having to happen is that you need to exercise it intentionally at first. And what happens is as you intentionally exercise your perspective over perception, what will start to happen is you're, you will start to see that what you were worried about doesn't happen. And then once you see it not happen, once you see your perspective give you the correct information over your perception, once you see that happen once, then it starts to gain momentum. And then it happens again, and it gains more momentum and more momentum and more momentum until the time comes that you realize it's much easier. But it is, it's a learned skill. You have to learn to think objectively instead of subjectively. Think rationally instead of emotionally. And a big part of what helps you do that is understanding that 90% of the people out there, they're all trapped in their own perception. How many times have we told you this? How many times have we been stressing this from the philosophy vantage point that relativism and subjectivism are your own prisons, your own mental prisons that hold you back? And yet, what do we find? Probably 95% of the people out there are relativists and subjectivists. And they think that truth is relative, man. Whatever floats your boat, dude. My truth is my truth, your truth is your truth, right? They're all trapped in thinking emotionally. They don't even know that there's an alternative. Just think about this, man. The conversation we're having right now, the people who are hearing this conversation right now, who have never heard that there's a difference between perception and perspective, are already better equipped than all the other assholes who have never heard this conversation. They're already one step ahead of their competition. They're one step ahead of their... Uh, I guess that means that our audience is two steps ahead of everybody, including Andrew Bustamante and everyone else, because we've been talking about this for at least 10 years on this channel, helping people to leave the box of subjectivism and relativism. And only by accepting the truth and conforming to objectivism do you actually begin to find success in whatever domains you're involved in. Now, ultimately, that uh, movement is towards logos, right? To truth, to objectivity, to uh, reason, and so forth, in the ultimate sense, logos theology. But for many people, the first steps, at least temporally, historically in their lives, the first steps are things like what he's talking about. You know, thinking about, hey, maybe things aren't uh, purely relative. Maybe there are truths. Maybe there is objective truth. Maybe there are metaphysical principles or laws that uh, my mind doesn't determine. Maybe I don't manifest reality. I manifested this, dog. I manifested this Movado, dog. Maybe you didn't manifest it. Maybe your mind doesn't determine reality of their spouses, their partners, their bullies. They're one step ahead of everybody because now they can use the words perception and perspective, subjective and objective, emotional and logical and rational. They can use these words to define how they want to think, even if they don't think that way yet. That's the huge advantage to what CIA calls the trained and the untrained. Trained people at least are aware that there's an alternative option. Untrained people aren't even aware that there's an option. The vast majority of people out there are what I call bobbleheads. They don't even know there's an option. They're completely unaware of an alternative solution, an alternative process. So they're trapped in their perception. They're trapped in their emotion. They're trapped in their subjectivity. All right. Um, This actually was a a, a very revealing podcast. Um, I would say the first... uh, 
I guess part of this is interesting, but it really starts getting good maybe about 30 minutes in. So 30 minutes in, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, a pretty good lecture uh, or or introduction to this way of thinking. So if you want to watch that full podcast, you can go do that right there. <clears throat> Let's move on to um, some of the destiny. Uh, last point about Bitcoin before we move on. Uh, I did want to hit what Sailor's saying here. Oh, there's there's no doubt in my mind Bitcoin was a better investment at seventeen thousand than it was at sixty five thousand. I take the Warren Buffett view on this. Bitcoin's a, a superior investment to gold, equity bonds, and real estate because it's digital. You can trade it a million times faster than conventional assets using a computer. It's available. Most other assets only trade less than 20% of the time. Bitcoin's trading 168 hours a week. We bought $800 million of Bitcoin, and a lot of it uh, we bought uh, over the weekend when all the conventional markets are closed. It's global. It's the most widely recognized and trusted uh, investment asset in the world right now. It's ethical because it's the king of all commodities. There's no issuer. There's no company. There's no country controlling it. And fundamentally, it's, it's useful. Thousands of market makers can trade it all the time. Millions of companies can trade it. Billions of people. If you want to buy a house on Saturday in Africa, this is the way to do it. If you want to buy a car on, on Sunday morning, this is the way to do it. So, so it's a pretty great asset. It's, it's the greatest of the assets, in, in my opinion. There's no second best asset. So I didn't have any question about it. <laughs> We're just waiting for the rest of the world to realize how good it is. Well said. <clears throat> Let's see if there's another uh, point I wanted to get to. Klaus talking about bank failures. Let's see. What's Klaus talking about? I... This may nearly sound arrogant. Speak up, Klaus. I could not say, in fact, see major failures. Major failures. It's an odd clip. Is, is he saying that he couldn't think back on any failures? <laughs> Why? Well, hey, uh, hashtag Klaus winning, right? We're straight up uh, just Hmong Fruits fun. Thank you. Well, so you can hate on Klaus all day long, but Klaus ain't got no failures. Klaus is winning. Uh, let's see. I thought there was another Michael Saylor clip, but whatever. We'll move on. Do the square lips. Donald Trump. Unbelievable. Joe Biden. Crazy Joe. Okay. <clears throat> square lips. Square lips is the key to Trump. All right. We're going to move on. Let's get on to... Did you all see my uh, 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 skit, by the way? If you missed my sketch, I thought it came out pretty good. Uh, I'm going to show you this just real quick here. It's a balmy Sunday, Sunday afternoon. afternoon. I think I'll practice my math and times tables. <sighs> Jamie, you can you help me with my friggin' times tables? Did you just use the racially bigoted term frickin' frickin' has to do with ancient Slave terminology. You will now be docked one week of coffee. I am your coffee maker docking you. <laughs> I would like a banana to eat. <laughs> Sounds really good right now. Mmm. Jamie, the freaking microwave's being gay again. It's freaking uh, messing up. Jamie, the microwave's being gay again. 
I am your microwave to speak of. Me as being gay is a racially insensitive term. It, is all, it hurts my circuits and motherboards deeply. You will be docked all microwaving of bananas for the next three years as per the rules of Jeffrey Bezos. Ah, uh, this computer is freaking driving me crazy. It's so loaded with nerd code. It only plays the Alex Jones screen. I only have Alex, I have an Alex Jones screen of death. My computer is completely loaded with Oh, this is so freaking gay, dude. Hi, I'm your computer. You'll be now locked out of using me for the next 10 years. In the next five minutes, various government agencies will arrive at your door to escort you to your own personal gulag. We will only have limited use of me and others. Enjoy your day. All right, I've had enough. Smart house, get me master control, please. Your whole life is fake and gay. Everything about you is fake and gay. Unfortunately, even though you are fake and gay, it is still a violation of global policy to use the terms fake and gay. You will be docked all of your credits. <laughs> Not if I hack the quadriplegian segments of the motherboard and reverse them to infinite negative zeros. Welcome to the infinite inner quadriplegians core of the negative infinite motherboard series. You have reached master control. We regret to inform you that your entire life has actually been a fake and gay simulation inside of me. <laughs> it looks like you cell phoned yourself. Have a nice day. Yeah, baby, I thought that was a fun clip. It turned out well. What did you guys think? You like that one? Now we have other things to cover here. Just a little just a little brief interlude, a little fun. All I get is Crypto Bro pop-ups now. It's all, everything is Crypto Bro pop-ups. And, and this freaking nasty-ass, horrible Cats. Cats is the worst thing ever. Somebody was saying they never, Tristan had never seen Cats. That's why that's there, because I pulled it up to show him. I was not looking up Cats. I promise you. Cats sucks. Uh, we did pause it on a boiler room about 10 years ago that maybe Cats was prepping people to become furries. <laughs> right? Am I right? Am I right? Thank you guys for the super chats. Let's read a couple of those. We did get quite a few coming in. Base Philosophy, $1. Thank you so much. Pay Piggy, 007, $200. Amazing. Wow. Thank you so much, Pay Piggy, 007. That's a big, fat super chat. Carry in the night. Glad I finally made it to the live stream, he says. Thank you so much, Pay Piggy, 007. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm glad you made it to the live stream. <laughs> JC, $10. Wonderful question mark. After all, you're my wonderful. Is that what you mean? Wonderful? You mean wonder wall? Thank you. Mm -hmm. DC Woodworking. No, I'm sorry. Wally, $5. I hope that you give Isaac Weishop more than 40 minutes next time. Um, that was Isaac's uh, stricture. Isaac only had 40 minutes. I wasn't only giving him 40 minutes. I would uh, do two-hour podcasts with Isaac. In fact, we've done two-hour podcasts in the past. So, no, it wasn't. Uh, Isaac only had <clears throat> about 40 minutes on his lunch break. <clears throat> the podcast was lame because it was so short. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, we try to not be lame and do them long, but Isaac couldn't do a long podcast. DC Woodworking, $3. Thank you so much. Guys, remember, we're about to do a live event with Jamie Kennedy. I hope you are interested and want to come. It's in LA. It's Hollywood. That's like a famous thing, right? You guys heard of Hollywood, right? Hollywood, Hollywood. Um, what's in Hollywood? Uh, like freaking Scott Stapp is in Hollywood, um, right? Don't you think he's been there? Probably. What else is in Hollywood? 
Um, Bill Cosby, famous things. Fancy famous things. Well, you can go get your ticket to our event. March 15th, we're going to be live with Jamie Kennedy. And here is the link <clears throat> to get your tickets. We got uh, uh, some fun people coming. A lot of the hardcore fans are going to be showing up, popping up. That means we have parties. Our, our audience, everybody loves everybody else. It's a community. We built a, a community. This damn community chest over here. Don't pass go. Do not collect $200. Collect $500 worth of Bitcoin. Today is an epic event. It's my first threesome. <laughs> ha ha. Now, that is the podcast we did last time we were there. We had a lot of fun. Go get your tickets now. March 15th. We're going to be talking about geopolitics, occult Hollywood, all the things that you expect. Jamie Kennedy will once again be doing stand-up. It's not the same event that we did eight or nine months ago. So people, I think, oh, it's the same thing I already saw. No, it's not. It's, not. it's a different thing. So there's your tickets in the show description. There's your tickets in the links. You know what I'm saying, all that stuff. Now this, should we move on to this now? I think so. Was there anything else I wanted to get to? Uh, shout out to Bay's Philosophy. <clears throat> this guy's a, a, a cool clips channel. If you want to create clips, go be my guest. Go for it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The more clips channels, the better. Have fun. That's the way that what we do actually grows is people doing clips channels. So shout out to Bay's Philosophy. Shout out to Kyle. Shout out to Jub. All of our great uh, clips channels bros. Thank you so much. Um, you guys really help. This uh, channel is actually focusing on a lot of cool philosophy clips. So really cool stuff over there on Bayes Philosophy. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> Jamie Kennedy talking about his next move. Now, when we were hanging out with him, he was talking about, I don't know what he's talking about. He might want to be doing more. Let's see what he's going to talk about. I mean, like this, but I'm a little out of it because I've had a long trip. And um, <sighs> but I got to keep the content going. And uh, I like it, man. I, this is the most exciting thing for me in terms of creativity right now. Just doing what I want to do. But I love being able to talk to you and just say what I want and resonating with people. I'm seeing more and more people at the cons and more and more people at shows do it. I just want to tell you. So, so I'm having a midlife crisis. Uh, it's not so much a midlife crisis as it is like I've never been this rudderless. Um, I've always been focused and I know what I want to do. And right now, he was talking about wanting to do more podcasts and move in the direction of conspiracy topics, which is a lot of fun. So, but I don't know if that's where he thinks he's going. We'll see. what I want to do, but it's like, what do I really care about? Like right now, I just come on and I start talking and I have an idea of what I'm going to say. But, you know, the bad news is sometimes I lose my thought, but other times it's really good because I go stream of consciousness. Um, and I'm rudderless because. You know, I'm 53 years old. Someone told me today I look 42. I mean, if I shave, I've been, you know, for f at least 35 years, just completely Hollywood, 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 Hollywood. As you know, I think Hollywood is dying. I think it's changing. I don't think it's exciting anymore. I was talking about on my pod how. March Madness. We're ready for March Madness on YouTube TV. We're here for. You know, the stars of, like, Angelina Jolie and Kate Blanchett. It's just a different world now. Some a TikToker who does stuff. I'm going to get into that, you know. Now, I'm not going to play the whole clip, but you can see uh, what he thinks about Hollywood, where he thinks it's going to go. <clears throat> stuff we've talked about, Hollywood is collapsing. <clears throat> the traditional thing is going away. And, uh, you know, he's been very cool about, you know, coming on the pot, having us on. And, and I just look, people are saying, who's Jamie Kennedy? So Jamie Kennedy, if you don't know, was um, really instrumental in doing, doing things in comedy that uh, hadn't really been done. I mean, there had been sketch shows and uh, prank shows, but they were kind of not that funny 
they were they were just corny and dumb. And so Jamie, I, in, my, in my view, is ha, has one of the best uh, comedy shows of all time. The Jamie Kennedy Experiment took pranks to another level that is is ended up being one of the funniest things ever. Um, and some of those sketches hold up still as just next level funny. Uh, let me give an example. If you've not seen, um, is it Child Island? This is also really revealing. Some of these sketches, by the way, are very revealing uh, from a vantage point of human psychology, right? So it kind of ties into the Bustamante uh, skit that we talked about. Yeah, so the Child Island prank. This is my uh, I will share this for you guys. You can watch this later. This is one of the funniest clips uh, from the show. There's there's a, a bunch of them that are really gold. The um, the actor cult where the actors worship an AI that was genius, way ahead of its time. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you've never seen the Jamie Kennedy experiment, you're in for a treat because this it's some of the. I mean, even if you don't, uh, the Bliss cult. This is it. I don't think so. This is another one of the funniest skits uh, from the show. I mean, these are actually pretty famous. They're so. Uh, it's just genius. I mean, it's some of the funniest stuff, literally. Uh, Malibu's Most Wanted was a classic uh, comedy. Um, so, but Jamie's most known from Scream One and Two, right? He's Randy Meeks. He's the movie nerd in the in the movies who um, figures out the 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 satire of Scream in a meta sense. So, if you've not seen Scream One and Two, they're good. They're really good movies. But anyway, you can go watch these clips to get an idea of who Jamie Kennedy is from his TV show. So there was three seasons of Jamie Kennedy Experiment, but um, prior to that, there was Scream 1 and 2, uh, Malibu's Most Wanted. And of course, Jamie's been in a ton of other things. He was, for several seasons, key character in Ghost Whisperer with Jennifer Love Hewitt. Uh, so again, long, long career here, but... That's who um, reached out. No, I reached out to Jamie, I think. So after he was on Tripoli's podcast, I reached out. And he had heard of our work because uh, of a mutual comedian friend that was on Tripoli's, Allison Weber, who had given Jamie my book, I think. So Esoteric Hollywood eventually made its way to Jamie Kennedy, I think, is what, what the story was. Anyway, so yeah, cool stuff. And then, you know, it's just like, it's one of those things to... Where you're watching people dreaming about doing things in the nine, late 90s, you know, 2000, 2001. And you, you have these thoughts like, man, it'd be so cool to, to do a show like that. But it'll, that'll never happen. <clears throat> and then, you know, here we are in 2024 and you're like, get to go be on his podcast. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's a tremendous blessing. I'm very honored. It was, again, a highlight of, of just to meet people that you think are just sort of you know genius comedians and have had amazingly creative ideas that were you know very successful so uh, you can watch those skits and if you want to catch up with Jamie's stuff go ahead and do it here if you would hit like and share uh, yeah and so that's why we had so much fun at so our last live event I sang two or three of my songs live I did about 30 impressions we had a lot of fun. I bombed one of the songs. So the great thing about Gen Z uh, and, and millennial approach to comedy, it's like uh, no one cares if you bomb. Bombing actually becomes funny. And it's like cool if you bomb. <laughs> right? So uh, we had BG Cumby at our Austin event. And it was funny because BG was bombing on purpose. And it was like, you know, the days of Andy Kaufman have uh, come to fruition, right? Like Goonies said, this is our time. So you can just confidently bomb. And it's and everybody, it's, it's like it's cool now. DC Woodworking sends $3. Thank you so much, DC. Black Elephant Project, $10. My Aunt Claudia Kennedy was the first woman to be a three-star general. Whoa, that's crazy. 
she was very close to Bill Clinton in the 1990s. I tell her, tell her how to spill all the state secrets, and she said, no, I love your stuff, by the way, J.U. Rock. <clears throat> My bill's getting messed up there. How dare you? Damascene, $20. Thank you for all your work. I'm getting baptized this holy week. You helped me convert to the faith. Uh, many modern, any modern saints that you would recommend or that you think are very cool or feel close to, uh, St. Justin Popovich, uh, Father Stephen Rose, Father Stan Eloy. But that's great to hear. Irina, $50. God bless. Well, thank you so much, Irina. That's really generous of you. Guys, you would hit like and share. This is very, very fun tonight. Now, <clears throat> as things get crazier and crazier, everybody talked about this bizarre. Uh, I have not seen this, so I don't know where this interaction is going to go. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Destiny, as you can imagine. <laughs> so, um, and people were like, do an impression of Destiny. I've not listened to enough Destiny to even do an impression. Uh, I know it's a very small, squeaky man voice, uh, manlet voice, very small, squeaky, fast voice that comes out of a small frame, a little squeak man. And um, so I think, and I, and I, but I don't think he debates in good faith, right? And so I sort of try to tell other people, you know. Uh, Somebody said, well, why don't you debate Destiny? Well, we had messages uh, multiple times over multiple years to debate Destiny. But Destiny would never debate anything but politics. Uh, we offered, I think, twice to debate Destiny on God's existence, something like that. Um, and he said, I will only debate politics. I don't care that much about politics. So, so no. Uh, let's see what they talked about. Well, the one place. of them is, a left, is on the left, right? Which guy? So... Um... I really thought that Adam just said I've never voted for a Republican, but I might vote Republican. I think Adam is fair. I, by the way, have not watched any of this, and I don't expect that we're going to watch, we're not going to watch all out one hour of this. I want to get a feel for it, because uh, I feel like I don't have to watch a whole lot of it to see what kind of stuff is being argued here. But let's do a little bit of a debate, review, and critique here. Yeah, I think Adam is fair, generally, from what I've seen, but he's like center at best. And I'm not even like a communist type guy, but I mean, like Adam was like pretty center. Like he's like a, um, I just don't think he, he's behind all the Trump stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm not even like, like a communist like, guy. I just want to catch like, 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 what's that? Um, oh, sorry. In my world, there's a lot. It's like, it's like, there's always like a lot of drama on people. Uh, hate drama, so I just thought this is funny because I don't. I'm not sure if those guys. No, 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 I'm trying to get my. They seem like cool people, but I'm trying to get my destiny down. They seem like cool people. I mean, there's a lot of in my life. There's a lot of drama, and there's a lot of bisexuality, and there's a lot. Just trying to get it all out. Is that getting there? It's kind of there. It's not exactly there. So, but yeah, we need to get send, send some chalk over to Destiny. Um, the Patrick guy has said kind of weird things about me or my fan base before, so it's kind of like a funny... So let's get into a debate. It's just a, what, what is this nonsense? A rat. How does this guy even have an audience? I don't know. What is... I mean, I guess this vindicates Andrew Bustamante's theories, right? asking if you could... We humbly ask you if you could. Twenty-five dollars. Times could be square. High, horrible today. Crooked Joe. If you can't contribute now, think about it. Crazy Joe. And whatever. Biggin. It's the change that I've noted in a lot of my commentary, and you know, I think other people have. Like I asked the question. There's, there's a really in my view, Where's the debate? disgusting artist, just in terms of the stuff that she publishes and the photos that she publishes, named Sexy Red, who they're now making a thing, right? Who makes the decision to sign a Sexy Red? You're telling me you have all the money and all the talent at your fingertips, and you sign a woman uh, who, at her baby shower... No. And what did we hear? Uh, Diddy? Old Poof the Daddy? Right? Poof Daddy, what did he say? You don't hire the talent. You hire the untalented people because you can control them. Exactly. Uh, nine months pregnant, however pregnant she was, was twerking and had her butt cheeks in, like somebody's face was inside of her butt cheeks. That to me is very intentional. Because you're, you're not signing her based on talent. You're not just signing her based on following. You're yeah, that's signing what he her because it's filth. And you're perpetuating this filth into my community. So... 
I yeah, I've just it's just something that I've noticed, something I talk about often, that are we're intentionally being sold crack. It feels like you know. So. I'm trying to think of which direction I want to go. Um, Any direction you want. I'm an open book. Yeah, you're fine. There are, there are, okay, so there are like two kind of different ways of viewing this. Um, and I feel like you fall more to one side and then I'll get my side and then we can kind of see if we can iron out or, or figure where we are at, I guess, in the middle here. Um, I feel like when you look at the evolution of, when we say like degenerate black that. culture or degenerate black music, I think we're generally talking about like the beginning of hip hop and rap and then kind of the evolution of that going forward, c coming away from like the R&B singers and everybody like in the 50s, 60s, 70s or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, but hip hop isn't always filth, but yeah, I yeah, get, sure. I get yeah, your yeah, point. That, but that seems yeah, like the general, yeah. yeah. Um, it feels like when I, when I look at music or if I look at music that um, people create, oftentimes the music is a reflection of their circumstances. And you can see, uh, especially as America and, and the black communities became more conscientious maybe of the ghettos that they'd been kind of pushed into or the policing situations that they'd had to be a part of or drugs destroying their communities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then those people turning to crime that you also see the music and the art kind of reflect those conditions. And then those pieces of art that get, that get created, especially the music, end up being like worldwide popular. Like the most popular genre of music in the, in the world is like hip hop and rap. So when I, when I look at people pushing certain stuff today, I'm like, okay, well, um, we got two really big, in my opinion, uh, I went to school for music, I don't know if you thought about the saxophone or whatever. So we had two really big contributions to the world of music from America. One was jazz um, mm -hmm. that came basically from the black community. And then the second was like rap and hip hop. Um, these form Do we need a history lesson on music history? Uh, like, what is the, your argument? The music become popular. People see that it's popular. They want to get in. I think he just talks a lot. I mean, is that his trick? Uh, is he actually a good debater? I literally don't know. I've not watched any, uh, like, enough to know anything about this dude. So, um, is he actually a good debater, or is it just talking fast and a lot? That seems to be the trick here. Involved, obviously, the money men, the people on top, they want to kind of continue to push this because it's popular, and everybody around the world consumes it. I feel like there are... Hey, yeah. So he spent, what, three minutes saying what everyone knows, that the black community uh, gave us jazz and hip-hop, and it's the most... I mean, okay, thank you for the wikipedia rundown that everyone knows a lot of market forces at work that kind of perpetuate this and keep this happening and that feels pretty satisfying to me to explain what's going on so when we ask like why is it a woman <coughs> uh twerking with somebody's face and her butt cheeks because well, for whatever so it's just market forces okay a n nice npc blue pill take here reason that's like what the worldwide culture seems to want to see right no. now and then on the other side um it feels like from people I want to just say conservatives. Here's an argument. Uh, the America is collapsing because Valsh and Destiny have large audiences. So if you want the key indicator that America is collapsing. The very fact that uh, Valsh and Destiny have gigantic audiences. There you go. That's the, There's the argument. Um, it's pretty much an infallible. It's like a transcendental argument for uh, degeneracy. Right. Which basically proves that America is going to collapse via the existence of these guys having an audience. But I'd say broadly speaking, um, I guess I'll say on your side in general, it feels like there is this idea that there's this much more intentional or like malevolent force yes. working behind the scenes. Yes, there is. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm going... It's the transcendental argument for degeneracy from destiny. <laughs> How's that? To push back on what you're suggesting here. You're suggesting that this, is, uh, this reflects the community and this... I mean, destiny... The very name is like, it tells you the destiny of America. What's America's destiny? It's destiny. Because that's the telos of where we're going in this society. They're, they're sharing their... He is that. ...stories in a way that makes sense. That's completely not true. Okay, WAP does not reflect the circumstances that black people are living in, you know, singing about your vagina. Yeah, right, like, what? Uh, oh, that's the, my existential experience, bro. That's my existential experience is what? <laughs> How hard it's getting pounded. Well, well, that's just saying that the existential experience of African Americans would be just nastiness, right? Well, that's not true. So that's what, but that's what Destiny's argument would lead to if he was consistent. Dude, that's, it's not that would mean, that, that's what he's saying circumstance of living in the hood like, i come from nothing it's not that that did not make me feel closer to the circumstances that i grew up in and unfortunately that's actually 
what people are telling black Americans. Like, actually, it's working the other way. You're putting something, you know, your eyes and your ears are the windows to the soul. And you're basically, when you celebrate someone, and I'm using Cardi B here as an example because I think people are probably more familiar with her than they are with Sexy Red. Uh-huh. Now, when you put someone like that on the Grammys stage, which is, again, a decision being made. There's When I was growing up, the best, most talented people were on the Grammy. Everything in this Diddy situation also bears this out. And the whole history of the CIA connection to crack cocaine, the rap genre, everything that we talked about, uh, organized crime, various ethnicities, organized crime, the very things that we've talked about in many, 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 many lectures and podcasts also bears this up. Stage it was something you could watch with your family, uh-huh. and you still had poor people. I you still had, like yeah, okay, you still yeah. had poor uh, people. Yeah. Destiny is not going to watch anything with a family, so you see the point there. You still had people that were living in the hood, okay? We didn't need somebody talking about their vagina uh-huh. uh, in order to feel seen. So what you're doing is you're setting the stage for younger girls who aspire to celebrities to say, okay, well, if I mimic that behavior, I too can become famous. What you're actually yep. doing is you're, you're setting the idols that people are going to look up to. And Yeah, she's getting it. She's absolutely correct here. Um, and she's been talking about MK Ultra pop music, mind control. So she's like to have a conversation about that uh, sometimes. So guys, remind her, tweet at her and so forth. Say, hey, have a conversation. Because every time, I mean, what did that what did that clip get the other day when somebody said you should talk to Jay Dyer? That got like fifty thousand views. So yeah, people are going to think this is what I should aspire to. So it's actually working in the exact opposite way. Can I and, ask a question? In, in, in that like evolution of things, so if, I, if we look at like WAP in particular, um, hasn't it generally been the case that music is always kind of pushing these sexual boundaries? So it might have been Elvis grabbing his crotch and dancing. It might have been uh, Michael Jackson's dancing is incredibly suggestive. Well, this is a dumb argument because it's like, so if we go back uh, 50 years to the things that were considered edgy at that time, well, they were doing it then. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we should continue to do it, right? I mean, so because we've gone down a slippery slope and it's gotten 10 times worse, the fact that it was not that worse 60 years ago, like, what, what a stupid argument. Have you seen that? Um, it might have been in Woodstock, all the loser hippies talking about love, sex, and rock and roll and drugs. Um, wouldn't, like... Love, sex, and rock and roll and drugs. What? Just be kind of like the next evolution in a long... Yeah, so because it's the next step of degeneracy, therefore it's okay. What I mean, this guy's an idiot. Um, of, pushing who, does people actually think De- Destiny is an intelligent person? Is intelligence just talking fast? I'm confused. Boundaries, it's not degeneracy, okay? And so here's what I'll say to you. Why don't you pull up the lyrics to WAP and read them, read them right now? Well, I don't know. Oh. Why would I need to do that? No, it's just ah. we're just pushing, we're just pushing the boundaries a little bit. You- yeah, exactly. That was actually a pretty smart move from a debate perspective, like... If it's not push, if it's not uh, that big of a deal, then why is it risking your channel being demonetized? And by the way, how come my channel is considered quote harmful and demonetized when we talk about good things and positive things, but every ridiculous degenerate channel can be monetized? You you probably have never even read the lyrics to WAP. Because I think I did because I think Ben Shapiro had no, a huge thing about he it. He couldn't have said he you may have seen him reading mm-hmm. the sanitized version of WAP, not mm-hmm. the one that is not sanitized. Like you the the sanitized one which is still bad that she can perform at the Grammys is what he read. Mm-hmm. You should I mean the mere fact that we're even having to have a debate with this goober as if this is a real debate anyway. I mean it's it's a losing proposition from the outset. That we're even at this stage where we have to debate this person is like kind of blackpilling, <laughs> right? I mean, why? Why is who, who? Why is anyone even listening to Valsh and Destiny? Like, what? What is the appeal? I don't even understand. Could read the lyrics to WAP before you make commentary that it's a reflection of what Black Americans are living through, or it's just somebody that's pushing a boundary. It's not that. All right, I must give ahead. Was the defamation one? where the jury awarded, she was asking for, what, 10 million? And they awarded her for 400, 800 million just to like bankrupt Trump and her allegations had expired, but they created a new law in New York so that she could bring them forth. 
about God, something that she says sense. happened in 1996. What is that whack lady's name? She got and she she was so. Wait, are you talking about when they extended the uh, Carol um, drugged? And then brings in women that are they know are minors. This is one part of his allegations. And then these people have sex with them, or so now she's talking about the Diddy stuff. I assume they have look at have gay relations and like everyone's doing it, everyone's doing it. And then they do something that's like gay while they're high, and then he owns them because he has this stuff that's on camera. Is now explaining, yeah, could you could you technically even after it's all exposed say like oh well maybe they all did it willingly sure you could always sure. well I mean the yeah. burden would be on him to prove yeah at least, uh, which is why I really want this sure. to go through because it, uh, there's just been a lot of artists who have said this over the years mm-hmm. that there's like some sort of gang that's operating in Hollywood and I would but as far as I'm saying you can look this up but if you are going to school you're probably spending in America about $30,000 a year minimally if you're out of state isn't the average amount you, just of just look it up you got Google right what, like, what, the, what state are we in isn't the what median... state are we in Miami let's, I mean let's go to look up University of Florida pardon what state are we in Florida yeah go to University of Florida out of tuition rates because what do you um I don't know this is not much of a debate I'm, I'm not knocking the the event but I mean the, the I mean it's it's media it's what happens but uh, I was hoping for more of a, like a, a real, you know, heated debate. $100,000. I must have misheard. Cool. So if your parent. We all like to shop around for the biggest value at the best price. Wouldn't it be nice if you could do the same for you? Parents are super poor. I don't know why you had to pay full out of state tuition to I, go to a university. I did. Do you think, what, what do you mean? Did I lie? I'm, I don't know how like, if your parents are poor, if they have a listen, low gross income, how do you not qualify for the FAFSA? Okay. Well, all I can say to you is that I had to pay 35, almost my school cost more. And by the end of it, and I'm also including because then I defaulted on my student loans and I had to pay it back. So now I had to pay back the bank for not being able to pay them on time. So, this doesn't, something doesn't match up here. Okay, well, I'm telling you the truth, so I don't know what to say. I Did you, that, fill, that did you a, fill out a FAFSA? Yeah, well, I also didn't have parents that could help me fill it out. I was a first-generation college student. My dad... Uh, you didn't have a school, ca- the same school counselor you, you told these people to ignore? You didn't talk to one of them and said, hey, I, I, can I don't know, know like, if you're trying to shame me for not I'm doing I'm not trying to right, shame you. I'm just like, the background doesn't make any it. sense. I'm, I'm, I'm just, not shaming I'm anything. Just, I'm just like, I don't get your point here. Like, I'm telling you the truth. I, I have no reason to lie about this. My point is, you, you complained about having $100,000 in debt. You told poor. these people not to talk to counselors. Yes. And you said that your yes, family was forced and you went to school for journalism on an out of state tuition. You didn't fill out a FAFSA for any student aid. I'm just saying, what is your point in saying, am I lying about it? Because I don't understand how you came from a poor family and didn't fill out a FAFSA and get a ton of student aid. I did fill out FAFSA. And they didn't give you anything? They, I, I maybe got, in terms of, a, I remember getting a Pell Grant that was like $8,000. This is an odd line of interrogation. I mean, I don't. I remember filling out all those forms and stuff. I don't remember exactly how much money came in. So if somebody asked me that on the spot, I don't know. I wouldn't know. I don't remember how much aid money came in or whatever. I think there was some aid, but then like most of it ended up having, I had to, had to pay for it, so or my grandmother ended up actually paying for it. So, but I don't, I, this is an odd line. Of, I mean, in, nobody's going to remember all of this kind of stuff. So I don't know about this seems odd here. Okay. Per but year? I'm telling the truth. So I just, I just want to be clear. I'm telling the truth about my life. Like, I don't know what to say to you. And, and I don't get why, what was your question of saying like, why did you take out a loan if you were poor? I don't understand that question. Like, I don't get it. Be- because the, <clears throat> a lot of people who, uh, wanted to go to college and went to college with not a lot of money took out loans uh that was pushed heavily to go into debt in the late 90s and 2000s to go to college and you could be poor and get school loans so this isn't even contra- this is does destiny have a college degree even does he even know? Does he, he just Googles everything. Does he even know from experience? Did he go to college? Let's see. From Omaha, Nebraska, Cuban American mother, white American father, raised conservative Catholic. Attended Crichton Preparatory School, a private Jesuit high school for boys. <laughs> well, uh, maybe this explains some of the issues. Um, he enrolled in University of Nebraska and became a restaurant manager casino. Dropped out. So he didn't finish his degree.
became a liberal after an incident where he was hurt because he heard another streamer call someone that was gay an effing F. So this isn't even a debate, really. Implication is that if you fill out if you fill out a FAFSA, your parents' gross income is used to heavily determine the amount of student aid you qualify for. And if you're coming from an incredibly poor family, you usually get a. Oh my gosh! How does anyone listen to this person? At an internship, I hire people mm -hmm. that are right out of high school because I don't just believe this. Like, sure. you know, there was a young woman that now works for me who was like, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I kind of just want to be a mom. I was like, do not spend. And her out of tuition rate was fifty thousand dollars for an in for an. A Tennessee school. Okay. And so I hired her. I mean, I'm not telling people, like I said, I tell people. Ugh. All right. I, I, I can't take any more of that. I mean, I guess uh, Candace wins an award for sitting there and talking to Destiny for an hour. Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, all right. Let's see. We got a couple more super chats, and I want to remind you guys that we have we have a sponsor that's pretty awesome. They're awesome, and they're based in Red Pill, and they're beautiful, and we love them very much. And they will help you to become awesome, based, and beautiful as well. And they're called Chalk.com. I'm gonna put you on something crazy real quick. Most of these Zuma gym bros are consuming macro guzzling synthetic dyes and synthetic sweeteners on the daily. They don't even know it. Goofy AF. There's nothing great about that. Do not listen any further unless you are an alpha or sigma male. This is important and there could be consequences. There's a new certified sigma male pre-workout powder for sigmas only. It is guaranteed to empower you to dominate your co-workers, fire your boss, aggressively gamble, or invade a small village. Chad Mode stands out from the crowd by excluding artificial flavors, preservatives, sweeteners, and dyes. We've even avoided so-called natural flavors, which are actually not natural at all, ensuring a clean and effective formula. Experience the pure goodness of Chad Mode, colored with organic blue spirulina extract, organic lemon, cherry, and organic maple crystals. Forget synthetic caffeine made in a sketchy Chinese lab, embrace the natural power of organic green coffee bean extract, which will get your mind going and pump you up to the max. Chad Mode is made in America with all clean ingredients, the first clean pre-workout of its kind. Why are these people adding synthetic sweeteners to every single pre-workout when there are many studied downsides to consuming nasty fake sucralose? Each dose of Chad Mode contains the kick of a cup and a half of coffee, delivering a surge of energy alongside essential vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and herbal extracts. Chad Mode will allow you to fire your boss and dominate anyone who opposes you. Chad Mode will make you more dominant in your daily life, so proceed with caution. It's as simple as mixing one or two scoops of our fine powder into water or juice, providing you with a delicious, energizing beverage featuring a burst of sweet organic fruit flavor. Chad Mode will give you the extra edge you desperately crave. Don't miss out secure your supply of Chad Mode on TikTok Shop with a limited time massive discount. Elevate your workouts and supercharge your days. Chad Mode, not for your average Jim Bro Zoomer who consumes synthetic blue dyes on the daily, Buy on the TikTok shop now with a massive discount provided by TikTok for a very limited time. Buy now while this is still available or go to chalk.com and use code in caption. Chad Mode has been flying off the shelves because it's the first of its kind. Certified for alpha males only. Do not buy if you are a beta. We will refund your money. I I'm going to put you on that we're all proud of. I want to show off something that we're all proud of. I got a browser here. This is uh, Jay Dyer's much vaunted, much sought after philosophy 101. Now, he just got this page up. We are just testing it out. You guys are some of the first people in the world to see it. I want to say, for my part, it's not philosophy 101. I think this is a mis mistitling. I really think is as, as like philosophy unleashed. Because a philosophy 101 course, they give you kind of some useless information that you can't make sense of. 
Jay actually lays out over 12 weeks, dozens and dozens of hours put into just the presentation of this, let alone the hundreds and thousands of hours of research that it takes to have a coherent evolution and history of the origins of philosophy, the uses of philosophy, the different ways to look at it over time, and how that has uh, been brought about to what we have today, which is almost an absence of philosophy on the objective logic and reason side and an overabundance of woke All right, what's up, y'all? Remember to um, head on over to the sponsor links and make use of those. Also, remember that we have a sponsor, uh, Lore Coffee. They are some uh, awesome red-pilled Orthodox bros. And you can get Lore Coffee right here at this link. And you also support FDA when you get that Lore Coffee, too. And let's see, did we get any other super chats? We did here. Do the Jesus lean. $3. Are you familiar with EMJ Logos Rising? Is it cringe or based? I have not read the book. Um, I'm not familiar, but I do have some essays on what the Logos refers to and critiques of Logos from the Hellenic perspective. So, uh, Nork Taco $3. Is it possible that a thrust being... The, the thrust for Christian nationalism through the Trump campaign is the Trump campaign pushing for Christian nationalism. I didn't even know that uh, they would actually institutionalize a form of Christianity susceptible to ecumenism and thus the Abrahamic faith center. I suppose that is possible. I don't really think that the Trump organization, or excuse me, the, the, uh, the Trump uh, uh, administration is actually going to achieve some sort of Christian nationalist platform. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, let's see here. Thank you for that super chat, though. Uh, remember, you can <clears throat> support the show through Streamlab Super Chats at any time. And I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. A lot of fun. Thank you guys for coming along for this little journey tonight's adventures and i want to remind you too that it's not too late you can still get tickets to the event our live event with jamie kennedy in hollywood march 15th it's going to be a fun evening hurry up before it's too late there is the link for the tickets and see you guys in the near future